Hello and welcome to another episode of the Free to Play. And we've managed to go through all of the light mechs. And now we're on to the mediums. We're starting to get a little bit more guns. And to start off, we're going to do the crab. And this has three large pulse lasers. We take a look at the mech lab here. You can see that one is in the center torso and two are in the right arm. So that means we have this entire left arm that has nothing in it. We can use that to soak damage. And while we can also use the left torso to soak, we have to be quite careful because we have an Inner Sphere XL280 engine in here. And the Inner Sphere XL engines die when you lose a single side torso. So, we can't lose that side. But we can take some damage there before we have to start putting our right side, which contains the majority of our weapons, into enemy fire. But, let's get into matches here and see how we can do with this uh, lasering crab. And for our first match, we're dropping into Mining Collective. And Mining Collective is a very brawly map. It, it's just a lot of short sight lines, like you can see here. We can't really see over here. Our max sight line is like a few hundred meters. It's a very good map for short range missiles and like large ballistics. But unfortunately, we don't have those. We have large pulse lasers, so we're going to have to find a nice place to use them. Now, typically, what's going to happen is your team is going to go and regroup down the right flank and then push. So our team is going to regroup and go down the D line, while this team will go down the E line. So I'm just going to head off here and regroup with our assault mechs because they're assault mechs. They can take fire for us, so we don't have to. And we're just going to be uh, the extra firepower when they step out and start taking hits. But let's see where be our opponents if I'm on the other side or even on this side I like jumping up right there with light so I always like to look at that one spot because sometimes you catch a light that's just doing a little poke Target but we have a grasshopper here on the right side okay we're gonna head up right here and thankfully our weapons are on the right so we don't have to poke out that far just a little bit and we can get a shot in and that grasshopper is overheating, so we get a good hit. And as he's trying to retreat, he's going to give us his back. And hopefully we can take it out, but this guy's really low. He will go down here to our team in just a moment. Excellent. Excellent. That's like a free kill for our team. Now we're going to move forward cautiously. There could have been allies of his waiting to uh, come forward and reinforce, but we got incoming missiles. Now checking... Uh, yeah. Is that that's an allied UAV. Hmm, maybe they got an enemy UAV up? No. Warning incoming missile. Wonder where those missiles are coming from. Because uh I do not see how I'm being targeted. But that is alright. As long as the missiles aren't landing, I don't care how I'm being targeted. Let's see. Let's push them in. Missiles are can be powerful if used correctly, but as long as you stay to cover, missiles should never really bother you. It looks like we're moving forward as a group through into Echo 4. Let's do this. We might get a person to touch their base. That should panic them and get them to come back. And hopefully, we can use that opportunity to shoot them down. Yep, there's a, an enemy UAV above us. Also an assault mech there. I, 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 come on, we gotta back up a little bit here so we can get our arms up and we can get down that UAV. Now they can't see us. That is a very important thing to do, is always to shoot down those enemies. UAVs, there's another one there. It is like trying to get some information on us. Uh, rather shoot the opponent than shooting the UAV. But as soon as this guy's down, and I went through his side torso there. I noticed in the top right that he, he was damaged right there. And I knew that that build had an XL engine. So therefore, I took a shot at that side torso in order to drop him efficiently. And taking out the UAVs constantly is uh, stopping their missiles. Although I need to get into cover before I take out this UAV. Got it. All right. Now the missiles are less effective. This enforcer is in our firing range. And take another hit at him before he gets away. 
Now we're just going to work this corner. Try to spread some of the damage as we back up with Torso Twisting. And we are 3-1. This is good. We are doing quite well. And we have the presence here so we can move forward a little bit. Although we don't want to uh, push too hard. Just enough so we can get shots on this Mad Dog and LRM one. And should our Medusa over there should be able to take him out. You can see there's an enemy shooting from the center. We'll just pop out again with just our right side and take some hits into his CT. Should be uh, the fastest way to take out this Orion. He's CT open and he's shut down. And we can execute him. Excellent. 7-1. We're running this nicely. Let's push. No reason in hiding when we are winning so obviously. But we are getting hot, so we're going to cool off for a moment here. Just hang back. Let our allies take some of the fight. And this guy dropped down. We'll try to come back around. And just put in some damage. As much as we can. Get another kill. Excellent. And uh, should be four more. One more lance of opponents. This guy is a CT crit, if I remember correctly. Wait for him to turn back and then just shoot him dead. Excellent. One less. And this guy's got the uh, low signal, so we know there's an ECM mech near him. So we can use that information to drop down in the right spot and try to get a nice hit. Now, when you have an Arctic Cheetah like that, or a light mech that's running away, it's a good idea to shoot for the legs, because that will remove their mobility and make it much easier to take them out in the future. But you can track this guy's movement by looking at who is uh, having the low signal. And I didn't mean to slip off there. It was an accident. But you can see, we have low signal here. He's probably this way. He's probably off to the right side in Delta 3. Just because of who has the signal. Or he's right here. But we have, still have our armor, and we should be more than enough to take him out, and we get the last kill there with a good burn into his rear CT. Excellent. 12-3, and we picked up a fair amount of kills. We're starting to get into the mechs that have some firepower in order to end the opponents. We've got 368,000 C-bills, 5 kills, 4 assists, 621 damage, 7,000 experience. All right. Let's get into another match. And in our next match, we're on Canyon Network, a very, very popular map as uh, it was used in the last MechWarrior Online World Championship series. Uh, pretty much every single match was played on this map. Everybody got used to it, probably almost to the point of being sick of it, but people still like to play on it, I guess. It's a good one. It's uh, extremely well used in terms of Target the acquired. amount of play area that is used at any one time. Because you use the entire map's area, where some maps you only use a small portion. We're just going to get a couple cheeky shots there, and then I'm going to retreat out of this position, as it looks like I want to be back with my team. We did get up a couple people that uh, recognized us off the start here. And ooh, there's a, a Warhawk up in the front. We got a good hit into him. He got a hit into us, but I like the trade. He hit us with two large pulse, we hit him with three. And I think ours was a little bit better uh, aimed than his. But what do we got for opponents here? That Warhawk Alpha is coming around the right side. Can I poke him? Is a really good question. I also have to watch out for this entire right flank. Might leave myself open. Ah, like there's a blackjack New back over there. Acquired. I want to make sure I don't leave myself open to him. But I want to start trying to work these angles. New target acquired. Get in a hit like that. Twist away. Move back. Try this again. Because I have everything on my right side. What I want to do is take hits on my left side as much as possible. Oh, this guy's pushing in. Very poor choice, actually. Unless they all push. Ooh, okay, here comes the push. All right, I'm going to spread damage and fall back. Fall back into our team. But that Evan Jag took so much damage into a CT. It was probably not that beneficial, but we're going to try to burn this Warhawk down. He's down. Excellent. Onto the dragon. Just go through that CT. Right through him. He's open up in the center. That guy's center torso. I knew I could kill him if he popped back up, so I immediately switched to the uh, 
damaged target that I knew was there the moment that he showed back up. And we're trying to go for that damaged fang there. He should be red now. Deep orange. Very good. And just get that nick on that cyclops there. I'm taking damage here. I'm going to fall back a little bit. We are winning these trades mostly, but I am a little bit concerned about my own health. I want to stay alive as long as possible so that I can do more damage. Because as long as my guns are singing, I'm making sea bills. This Orion here needs to fall back. Pushing forward there was not the not the decision that he should have made. We know that Fang is super CT red, so if you see that dragon pop up again, we are going to shoot for him, but we're falling back, we're falling back. We're just trying to get into cover. We want some of our allies to push forward to take some of this damage with us. We want to share armor, not to have a single person taking all the damage. Well, this guy's coming forward. Trying to take off side torsos to limit his firepower, but now he is down, he's weaponless, so I can ignore him. Now this... Where is this dragon here? It's not the right dragon, had a different camel pattern, but he shut down so I can move forward and take a good shot, although my ally shot off one of my sides. Uh, on my arms there because he probably was not paying attention to my positioning. New target but acquired. that is unfortunate. It happens. That Vindicator CT crit, so as soon as we can see him, we're going to try to take him out. But we are 7-5. We're doing all right. Got the, got the Vindicator. Now, my left torso is well, my tanking torso, but it was open, and unfortunately we get taken out. Uh, what I was going to say there at the end is my left torso was the one I wanted to tank with, but it was open. And if I had lost it, I would have died. So I decided there to put my right torso in the way to take a hit, which put my right torso down to very, very low. But if I hadn't have done that, I would have died a second earlier. Now, it could have been that I could have gotten away there, but unfortunately I didn't. But we are 10-7 here. There's only two opponents remaining. It looks uh, good for our team. We've got this blackjack and... Is that the, the crit dragon down there? I can't tell. i got to pop on to the Shadowhawk here. No, it's not. The, the dragon should be dead. And it looks like it's just a phoenix hawk and a blackjack. But we do have a lot of damaged mechs. These, uh, this Phoenix Hawk specifically is very well armored. We have a lot of guys that are CT crit who could be de destroyed from him. And we have a, an Atlas that is in the backfield that is uh, built a little strangely and uh, is not in the battle. If this, this, these, what we need to do is our guys here who are very damaged need to wait for our Atlas to get there in order to take them out or, as this uh, gridiron just went and did, just go up and execute them if you hit them correctly. This gridiron will probably be able to end this as he still has a good amount of armor. And this Phoenix Hawk probably won't be able to get away with him. Get, get away from him in this situation. But, good tactics that this uh, gridiron is taking. He's staying high because if he had dropped down, the Phoenix Hawk, just as he did, would have jumped up and would have been able to get away from him. But that guy's out of ammo. This Atlas is slow and out of LRMs, so he's just gonna have to use his lasers. But the Phoenix Hawk here is doing something he shouldn't. He, oh good. He was shooting at the Blackjack, uh, the, the Hunchback here, but he probably realized that the Hunchback was not a threat and was out of ammo. But he overheated and he got taken out. And we won and we got the supply cache, yes. Give me every one of those supply caches. I need them. Ah, doing so well with this little crab here. 504 damage, 2 kills, 218,000 sea bills. And we got that premium time from the event that is going on currently for 72,000 bonus. Excellent. And let's do one more match for this video. Alright, and for our last match... We're on Grimplexus Skirmish. And this map should be alright. I like to think of each map in terms of its optimal engagement range. Things like Mine and Collective are brawl maps. You can get away with stuff that you can only fire at only under 300 meters because you can use the terrain in order to get that close. 
This map I like to think of mid-range, so 300 to 600, and some possibilities for long range, 600 to 900. Which is perfect for us because we have 365, so we have enough range in order to poke between the pieces of cover. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into Fox 7 here, and the opponents are going to be coming from Gamma 6. So we'll be able to get up there, get in a position, and start poking at them before they get to us. Because if we see here, if I get into position here, you can see it's just under 600 meters into the next piece of cover over there. And uh, if I get, if I was over there, it would be approximately the same sort of thing. 600 meters until down into that cover. Arctic Cheetah there. Uh, Arctic Cheetah in Gamma 7. A little bit of a, an aggressive push there. One thing I like to do is a little cheeky, is you can shoot through these struts, and people don't expect it. We just gotta back up the right point. There we go. Now we can see through the struts. And we can watch to see if a person's gonna come through here. We'll just hold this position. Waiting for our heavies to get here, our heavies and assaults, but that catapult shouldn't push that direction, as he's probably gonna get shot at, unless he's really good at poking. Just fall back. Old position. Don't trade. There's that guy. He probably didn't notice us. If he pokes back up in the same location, we'll take a shot at him. Where are you, little cheater? Not that he's a cheating person, but that I just like to call Arctic Cheetahs, Arctic Cheaters. Just because, you know. There we go. We got a good trade on him. But now he knows we're here. He shouldn't have come back up. If I was playing that guy, I would not have poked that position again. But we managed to get two really good hits across the center. So he, his armor should be weak, probably orange by now. Maybe even red if all of that registered into the right section. But there's this guy coming forward. We can shoot for his torso sections and then use that central bit to block his return. Just work the angles. Work the angles. In between all of this, I'm flicking my eyes down to the situation Morning. on my, uh, my radar there and taking that UAV out covers my ability to not get learned. We're just holding it here because this is a good position for us. They're coming around the right side in Gamma 7 to Fox 7. In mass, Atlas pushing. They're coming Gamma 7 to... Uh, Gamma 8. Target acquired. So we called that out to our team. We fell back. We're going to let other people take the initial flak for us. And then we're going to start putting some damage out. Again, working these positions here. This guy's backing up. I'll get a hit on him before he gets away. We had a couple assault mechs go to our right side. New target acquired. There's a Warhawk and a Mauler over there. We just got to see if we can get some angles. We can see this shadow of the Atlas, and now we can shoot at him. Excellent, excellent. We're just going to hold position here. There's no reason for us to push in any direction. But we can try to pick that Warhawk off from the top. We're just holding. Hold. Get this good damage in. Excellent. We're 2-0. This is, this is good. We're in a good position. Tactically and uh, sensibly. All right, there's that Mauler pushing the right side. A little concerned about him. He is on my flank where I couldn't be able to uh, properly respond to him if he pushed. So let's go over here and clear up the right flank. And then I'm going to reposition to one of these uh, buildings here for cover. So this Mauler, he should be firing and we can just sneak in, take his CT off and take that kill. This Warhawk, take off the side, he's down. Alright, we've cleared up the right side. Right flank is cleared, wrap around and kill him. Alright. Let's do this. They said they got a guy sniping. Kodiak 3 there. Probably the right torso is weak. So we're going to go after that guy's right torso if we can. And then his CT is 
weak, so we'll drop him. Ah, uh, ally got him before me. 8-2, roll him over. Target acquired. Now we can just uh, move out, just take him out, because we have such a numerical advantage. It, it is over. That's one thing about MechWarrior Online, it is a snowballing game. As soon as you snowball, you win. We just got lights in our, our midst here. Arctic Cheetah. This Viper. I've already shot the Arctic Cheetah, so I'm going to work on the Viper as uh, I just want to make sure I get as many hits as possible on as many mechs as possible, because that will give me more money with uh, assists. And now we just have one left. Just a Hellbringer. And this guy is going somewhere. I think he said it was Echo 6 that had a, a mech sniping in the background. Yeah, he's going. He's in Fox 6. Fox 6, Fox 5. No idea. Probably. Target acquired. This uh, Rotter 2C is going in. This one Hellbringer won't be able to survive the onslaught of our entire team. But he's down to just half a mech. And a very interesting build for the Hellbringer. Not something I would recommend. But we win another match. Excellent. Ah, oh, man, we did some really good work with this uh, crab today. We got several kills in every single match. 361,000 C bills, 582 damage, one, uh, two kills, eight assists, and two of those were kill most damage delts. But that is going to be it for this episode. We are kicking some butt, and I can't wait to get through the rest of the the mediums, as uh, they're all actually pretty fun builds. But for now, thanks for watching, and good hunting.